so let's take a look at the topic foundation in the subject building construction and materials and we will be taking a look at functions and types of foundation so moving on let's first see what kind of load that needs to be transmitted by the foundation to the soil below it consists of live load which are also known as superimposed load then dead load means the load of the structure itself then snow load and wind loads are there all these loads are meant to be transferred to the soil or to the strata below by means of the substructure or foundation as we call it then see in this structure we are seeing that the dead load is indicated by red color yellow color shows the live load that is partition wall or furnitures and fixtures then green waves are showing the wind load and the blue one is the snow load onto the structure all these total loads are meant to be transmitted to the hard strata below by the foundation okay then foundation transmit the load to the soil below in such a way that settlements are kept within permissible limit and the settlement do not cause any cracks in the superstructure and foundation transmit the load to the soil below such that soil do not fail okay therefore the foundation or the substructure is protecting the superstructure from any cracks and also it is taking care that soil below it does not fell then see a recently constructed structure is there and there is no settlement at all okay see the blue line is showing the margin where our footing or foundation has been kept and it is up above the blue line means there is no settlement that has taken place now let's see in next diagram how settlement takes place see the footing can be seen gone slightly below the blue line okay therefore structure has been settled but note that the settlement here is uniform okay it is not a differential settlement see whenever you are going to construct a structure settlement is obviously going to be there but the thing is the settlement should be uniform and it should be within limit okay the dangerous thing about settlement when it is differential like in this case see the settlement of the structure is differential okay the left side footing is below the is above the blue line okay is below the limit okay and the other footing the right hand side footing is above the limit means it has gone below the blue line means settlement here is not uniform it is non uniform or as we call it the settlement is differential okay then when we say that we are loading the footing we are loading the foundation then it is going to cause shear failure and if the loading on the column is proper if we are designing the footing properly no shear failure of the soil will take place but in case if the load is too high if the design load is too high then the bearing capacity of the soil then soil may fail under loading onto the footing okay then let's see some reasons of differential or unequal settlement and the reasons are weak subsoil shrinkable and expansive soil frost action uplift pressure excessive vibration from external machineries then slow consolidation and slipping of strata on slope let's see each of these reason one by one see in case the subsoil or the soil which is in contact of the footing is weak it is not that much strong then the footing or the foundation may settle inside okay weak soil has not that much strength in order to support the loaded footing or foundation that's why it may cause differential settlement of the foundation okay then we are having shrinkable and expansive soil the best example for this is black cotton soil which upon entry of moisture swells and when the moisture exists it shrinks okay this shrinking and expanding action puts a lot of stress on the footing as well as all the component of structure which are in contact which are in directly contact with such soil okay therefore shrinkable and expansive soil this erratic kind of soil do put 
a large amount of stress onto the footing and may cause differential settlement or non uniform settlement then frost action see whenever we say soil is there whenever we say soil strata is there there is going to be some amount of moisture inside the soil now this moisture is not dangerous when it is in its very liquid form but in snowy countries in cold countries when such moisture collectively expand in format of ice then the ice bulb or the ice lens is going to put a large amount of stress onto our footing onto the structure's footing thereby causing some kind of differential settlement or disturbance to the footing or foundation then uplift pressure from water or buoyant force of water or up thrust from water below the footing may cause differential settlement of the footing and since nature force is there okay uplift pressure or water content or moisture content within the soil is a natural force okay and its behavior cannot be easily predicted that's why the uplift pressure may cause differential settlement or may disturb the footing structure over the structure of the structure then in case some mining action is going on in same in case uh, some construction process is there then the continuous vibration may cause the soil particle to compact to get consolidated or to cause the so soil air expulsion okay and that's why rearrangement of soil particle structure may take place over there and that's why because of this continuous vibration what may happen is the soil may settle down and when the soil below the structure is settling obviously the footing is going to settle okay therefore we do not want excessive vibration or continuous vibration from any machine which is in, in which is inside vicinity of our structure then slow consolidation of clay see consolidation is a long term process whenever we construct a structure and put the load on to the soil then compaction take place means immediate expulsion of air will take place but when we say consolidation consolidation consists of process of removal of moisture from the voids moisture which is coated around the soil particle thereby consolidation is a slow process and it takes place over a large span let's say one year or decades almost that's why consolidation is a long term process and if clay is there then consolidation is going to be there and this is why settlement of the footing differential settlement may take place say strata are there in soil different layers are there different strata are there and that's why one strata when it loses cohesion and adhesion with another strata it is going to slip off from its very position okay and on the slope this is the most probable reason for failure of structure on the slope okay therefore one of the strata if it is slipping then it may take away soil from the soil which is present below the structure or which is present below the footing and it may cause differential settlement and total collapse of the structure okay these were the reasons for differential settlement of the foundation or let's say footing now let's see what are the functions of foundation there are five to six functions that needs to be performed by a foundation which include load intensity reduction proper distribution a level surface provision stability against lateral forces then safety against undermining agents then protection against soil movement see when we say reduction of load intensity what we are doing when we are providing foundation is below the column you can see in first diagram that there is no expanded area expanded surface area in the first case and in second case the same column is there and the load is same over there but what we have done we have provided a flat leveled having more area surface has been provided and this is why the column can effectively dissipate its concentrated load onto a greater area therefore though no shearing or no puncture failure of the soil will take place in second case okay this is how load intensity is reduced okay intensity of the load is getting reduced then even distribution of the load here again we are having two columns one of the column is less loaded and one of the column is heavily loaded but here 
the factor p is being kept constant in case of both the columns how see p is equal to f by a where f stand for the force and a stands for the area now when we want to say that p is to be kept constant for the soil below because soil has a specific value that it can support for the given loading and in the first column when we say the load is less therefore value of f is less and thereby the denominator a is provided less therefore we are having a specific value of p now we have to maintain the same value of p for second column that's why what we have done since the force in case of second column is more the area in case of second column for the footing is more provided therefore more the denominator more the numerator and that's why a constant value of p can be maintained and by having the proper design of surface area to be provided below the column we can have the value of p constant throughout each column even though they are varyingly loaded okay with respect to numerator we have to adjust the denominator so that we can achieve one single value of p okay let's understand this concept with some simple examples say we are having a soil which is allowing a load of up to 40 kN per meter square less than 40 kN per meter square see normally we express the soil bearing capacity and loading in newton per mm square but for simplicity we are using kN per meter square so that we can understand the concept on first hand see in column a 20 kN is the load and area is 1 meter square therefore p intensity is 20 kN per meter square which is less than 40 kN per meter square thereby the column is safe to be placed on this soil strata now in column b load is more which is 40 kN but the area of the footing provided is more that is 2 meter square therefore if we do p is equal to f by a that is f is 40 a is 2 thereby we get p is equal to 20 kN per meter square which is again less than the bearing capacity of the soil which is should be kept less than 40 kN per meter square thereby column b is also suitable to be kept on this strata now let's see in detail how this even distribution of load is to be kept c column a b c d are there and they have been provided with some footing and we are saying that allowed load on this soil strata should be less than 40 kN per meter square let's see how each column is kept over there and which column is safe and which one is not first one column a 20 kN and area of the footing is 1 meter square therefore p is equal to 20 kN per meter square which is less than 40 kN per meter square column a is good to go then 40 kN load in column b and 1 meter square is the area therefore p value is 40 kN per meter square and it is exactly equal to 40 kN per meter square which is allowed load on the soil therefore column b seems to be unsafe to be put on this soil strata in column c 20 kN is the load and 0.5 meter square is the area which is p is equal to 20 by 0.5 which comes out to be 40 kN per meter square which is exactly equal to the load carrying capacity of the soil that's why we cannot put c on this soil strata now in column d the load is 10 kN surface area is 0.25 m square again for column d p is equal to 10 divided by 0.25 which comes out to be 40 kN per m square therefore column d is also having the exact intensity of pressure which is equal to the load carrying capacity of the soil strata that's why we cannot keep column number d on this soil what we are trying here is we are trying to keep the load intensity given out by the column or by the footing should be less than the bearing capacity of soil therefore we can have some kind of factor of safety over there okay only the first column is maintaining a factor of safety of 2 because the load intensity is 20 kN per meter square and allowed load on soil should be less than 40 kN per meter square which is almost half that the soil can carry okay then how a foundation provides a level surface see when we say that footing or foundation is providing a level surface we are talking about a common horizontal plane platform which is provided by the footing 
see our footing rest on a hard strata and upon that we go for a plinth and upon that we construct the superstructure therefore for the construction of superstructure the horizontal platform is provided only by our foundation or footing as we say it okay then protection against lateral forces see moisture movement then earthquake forces then wind forces are the lateral forces that tend to cause instability in our structure now this footing or foundation act as anchor over there okay it hold the superstructure in its very position in its designated position and keeps away the action of this wind or moisture or water or earthquake forces therefore lateral stability is achieved by having a properly designed foundation for our superstructure or let's say simply building or structure then safety against undermining see entry of moisture from the soil below or burrowing animals such as mice are there or moles are there they can cause serious damage to the structure in the floor in the foundation and having a properly designed footing or foundation keep all these undermining forces away therefore safety against undermining is ensured by having a properly designed footing and let's say foundation then protection against soil movement as we had discussed a soil may have a tendency to shrink or to swell that is to expand and to contract upon entry of moisture and upon exit of the moisture respectively and this movement this movement let's say even if it is in mm that is millimeter but it may cause a tremendous amount of stressing on to the superstructure which is in contact with such soil and since we are having a rigid foundation rigid footing over there we can say the footing or foundation provides a total protection against such kind of soil movement then let's see what are the essential requirements of a good foundation how a good foundation should be first one is it should sustain all the loads then it should be totally rigid not elastic or not plastic then it should be at sufficient depth to avoid the erratic behavior of soil then it should have a good location let's see each one one by one when we say it should sustain all the loads we are talking about dead load live load wind load and snow load see wind load and snow load are probable are available there or may be experienced by the superstructure with respect to the vicinity with respect to the locality or what kind of area the structure is in okay for a skyscraper wind load will be very high then in case of snowy countries where snowfall is persistent the snow load will be considered but for any given structure dead load and live load will always be there therefore the footing or the foundation should sustain all the possible load that is going to come on the structure in near future or in present then we say that the footing or foundation should be rigid okay there should not be an elastic movement but because whenever we say a structure or let's say the substructure or the footing is rigid there will not be any differential settlement taking place inside the structure if let's say the footing is elastic or let's say plastic upon loading of the superstructure the elastic or plastic footing or foundation may deform and such unevenly deformed footing or foundation is going to cause serious kind of problem by having some kind of non uniform or differential settlements that's why we should say we should have our substructure or footing as rigid one neither elastic nor plastic then the footing or foundation should be at enough depth means whatever the erratic behavior shown or exhibited by the upper layer of soil should not cause any problem to the superstructure or to the footing itself because upper layer of the soil is not that much compact and it has always an erratic behavior means it can swell it can shrink upon the entry of moisture and it is not properly compacted and it is in loose states that is why we keep the depth of footing to such a strata that the strata is very much hard and is capable to hold the footing as well as the loading given out by the superstructure onto the footing 
then good location should be there for let's say structure itself and specifically with from point of view of substructure that is our footing see no water body should be in direct vicinity of our footing or it should not be too close to groundwater level or groundwater table let's say and it should not be very close to a mine shaft okay because all this component all this factor may cause instability or some kind of disturbance in the proper functioning of footing okay the structure may collapse because of one or more of these reasons now let's see what are the types of foundation specifically there are only two types of foundation there are two main divisions of foundation which is shallow and deep foundation now let's see how shallow and deep foundation is categorized for the term foundation as per dr karl terzaghi as he said foundation is divided as shallow or deep foundation by having a simple term by using a simple classifying classifying term which is whether depth is less than or equal to width if the answer of this question is yes then we say that the foundation is shallow one and when depth is greater than width we say that the foundation is deep foundation remember the formula depth less than equal to width if the answer is yes the foundation is shallow and if depth is more than width the answer is the foundation is a deep foundation see when we say that foundation is shallow then we are seeing that in this specific example the depth of this footing is very less than the width of the footing that's why the foundation has been classified as shallow foundation now in next example we are seeing that the footing which is provided specifically in this case has its depth much larger than its width that's why the foundation is called as deep foundation here so these were the classifications of foundation and in next lecture in the next video we will take a glance at various shallow foundation which you can see in the diagram which are spread footing strap footing spread footing for wall strip footing for wall then raft or mat footing or foundation rectangular combined footing and trapezoidal combined footing so that was all for the introductory part of foundation i will see you in the next lecture till then bye bye